Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, I'm running really late tonight because I've been doing a little bit of prayer and uh, just trying to make sure that when I step into this three or four uh, little mini-series that I do it justice and that I walk in love toward people. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is, is talk about this today. Uh, I have several people, because I mentioned this on a snippet, and I've gotten a couple of messages about it. Uh, people are wanting me to go ahead and talk about sowing and reaping, uh, sowing a seed of money so you get more money back. Um, and I've hit on it a few times here and there, but not, not really talked about it for two or three uh, sessions. So I'm going to do this. Uh, now, let me just make a joke. You know there's going to be leaders... Uh, pastors and whoever that's going to hear me do this teaching and they're going to go, oh, well, we're marking her off the list uh, because any time that I teach that uh, the tithe is a lie, the lie of the tithe, or when I teach something like this, watch what happens, that those people in leadership will say, oh, well, we can't invite her because if our people listen to her and she teaches on that, they'll quit giving. <laughs> Did you know I'm not ever teaching anybody not to give? Guys, we should be abundant givers, okay? We should uh, give abundantly, but it's not so that we can get stuff back. We are not on God's exchange program, okay? And when church leaders teach you that, they are lying to you so they can get your money. That It's really that simple, okay? We are supposed to give freely from our heart because we love other people. When we give money to get more money back, we're doing out of self-love for ourselves. We are not loving the kingdom of God. We are not doing it out of motivation because we love other people. We are doing it for self-gain. That is not in your Bible, guys. That is not... The pro and some people call it prosperity gospel. Did you know Jesus did not teach a prosperity gospel? Jesus said, freely you have get, been given, so freely give it away. Will God bless us? Absolutely. God blesses me everywhere I go and everything I do. I am blessed beyond comprehension. But did you know, I never, when I was a new believer... And 12 years ago, for three years, I faithfully tithed, not because my I wanted more money back. It was just because out of the goodness of my heart, I wanted to help in the kingdom of God any way that I could. I have never given any money so that I could get more money back. I never did it through tithing or this prosperity gospel of uh, sow a seed of money to get more money back. I have never done that. Uh, here's something I want to stop and say real quick. Did you know that historically, and it's even true today, that the richest people who have ever lived, the richest people who are alive living today, are non-Christians. They do not believe in God. They do not go to church. They do not tithe. And they do not sow seeds of money into ministries. Now, if any of this was true about tithe and God's going to give you money back, okay, or invest a seed of money into a ministry and then you're going to get 30, 60, and 100% back, the richest people would be people that do this, that do it. The richest people would be churchgoers who have tithed for 30, 50 years of their lives. The richest people would be churchgoers or people who watch TV and sow seed money into ministries. But right, the opposite is true. Did you know the poorest people are people who believe in God, go to church, and put tithe money in the offering plate, money they don't have, by the way, money that they don't pay their rent, they don't buy food, they don't take care of their own household. By the way, did you know that Paul wrote Timothy and said, anyone who does not take care of their own household and provide for their household is worse than an unbeliever, worse than an imbecile. And so God wants us to take care of our own families first. 
before we start giving our money away and our little three kids going hungry. Okay? So, but the, the people who are more impoverished than any other group of people are Christians who have been indoctrinated to believe in the tithe, indoctrinated to believe in this false doctrine of seed money into ministries. These are the poorest people. The richest people are unbelievers who don't go to church, don't tithe, and don't do seed money. If any of these two teachings had any foundational truth to them, the opposite would be true. Okay? I'll, I'll throw this in for free today. Did you know I was an atheist for 23 years and I wasn't lacking for anything? I was not financially lacking for anything. And it, so you would think that people who had been in the church tithing and sowing seed money for 23 years would be extremely wealthy. And people like me, I'd be living uh, paycheck to paycheck, borrowing money from my best friends to pay my rent and uh, needing to be on food stamps. But that simply is not the case. So I think that we should really think about that, guys, okay? Because if somebody is teaching something that's true about the kingdom of God, we should see some results with that uh, that they're teaching. You know, if they're telling you that when you give $50 that God's going to give it back to you 30, 60, or 100 fold, we should see that more often where people are like going, yeah, dude, you need to, you know, sow into uh, Pastor Poopy's ministry because he, man, it's coming right back around to me. So let me get started today on my first teaching about the uh, fallacy of sowing a seed of money into ministries. Uh, I'm going to strategically go down some scriptures. The first scripture that I want to use is going to be out of Matthew chapter 13. It's also found in Mark chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 8. And this is in red. Jesus taught it, okay? Jesus was teaching about sowing and reaping. And he. I want to first show you in this verse, in this parable that Jesus taught, he taught it in public, and then privately he goes into more detail with his disciples. Uh, the first thing I want to make sure you understand is that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, Jesus identifies what he's talking about, what the seed is, and it is not money. Jesus did not talk about money in, at all in this section of, of uh, the parables in Matthew, Mark, or Luke right here. He did not talk about money. Out of Jesus' mouth himself, he said the word or the message of the kingdom of God, the good news message of the kingdom of God is the seed. That's the seed. Okay. Then he goes into talking about how the seed either took root or it didn't. And what he said about the different kinds of soil was different people's hearts. Okay, so if their hearts are hard or the, the cares of the world have taken them astray, Satan comes and steals the word out from under them or whatever. But the bottom line is what the soil that Jesus was talking about was not the church bank account, okay, or a ministry's bank account. The soil, okay, so the seed is not money. And the soil that it gets planted in is not somebody's bank account. Did I say that clear enough? The seed is the message about the kingdom. The soil represents different people's hearts and how well they're willing to receive the message about the kingdom of God. Okay? It was never about money. It was about the kingdom of God message and how people received it, and if they didn't, what the problem may be. Okay, that's where we're going to go with that one. Now, the next one I want to use, I've heard this and used many, many times. Uh, in fact, there's one guy that every time he'd get on stage, he'd talk about this because this worked really good for him, and he had it spit-shined. And every time I had churches, that's like, going, oh, yeah, we're going to let him take up the offering because he does so good at it. What they mean by that is he is so slick at the way that he puts this out there for people that their wallets just pop open and they take in big offerings, okay? 
And I, that's harsh, I know, but I know. Man, I've heard it. I've been on the inside, the counting of the money inside. Okay, so I know a whole lot about what I'm talking about here. I'm in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And this is Jesus talking again. And here he says, Give and it will be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. Now let's talk again about what was Jesus actually the subject of what Jesus was talking about. Did you know in none of that passage does Jesus say money? He never uses the word money. Okay. Now, I have seen in a couple of newer translations where it's got in parenthesis uh, how you measure and give money but that, my friends, is not true. That has been adjusted to support what's being preached from pulpits, possibly. But I'm, I, I'm telling you, the Greek text nor the Aramaic text say money. None of them have the word money in them. Jesus was talking about relations and how we treat one another. Okay, he talked about judging people, and that means pointing your finger at them, telling them that they're sinners and stuff, where you're a sinner too, but it's okay, your sin's kind of cool, right? But what they're doing is, is not. Uh, so Jesus was talking about judgment, condemning people, and if we walked in forgiveness toward each other, Jesus was talking about how we treated people would be how we would be treated back by people. That's what he was talking about there. So what I want to talk about real quick before I wrap up, I need you to know this. Jesus, in the parable of the seed and the sower, nor right here in Luke chapter 6, of how we give, it will be given back to us. Jesus was not teaching about money in either one of them. He, okay, when we teach this, either one of them, having to do with money, what we're trying to do is stir up a fallen man's selfishness, his self-motivation of, God, I'm going to give you this money, but you promise you're going to give me back an increase in that. And that is not biblical. That is not biblical. We are not on a heavenly exchange program of, okay, Dad, I'm going to give $10, but now when I get home, I'm going to have a, you know, $1,200 laying in the living room floor in big bills. God is not on an exchange program with us. Did you know that when we go into it with I'm going to give with the condition that I'm going to get something back for my own good, that we are dealing with our self-centered man that has not died unto Jesus and living for the kingdom of God. When we give money, there's only one reason, and it is to get the message of the kingdom to other people, which means that we're doing it selflessly with no expectation of getting money back. We are doing it to benefit others, to bring glory to God. It has nothing to do with ourselves, guys. It has to do with us loving other people and loving God. Anytime that we give money into any ministry, it should be because we love other people and we want to see them come into the kingdom of God. Okay? Well, listen, I'm going to sign off here today and I will pick up on this tomorrow. Okay? Have a good night. Bye-bye.